it's so great to talk to you guys today. Tell me what it's like to be play children of parents who were friends and then enemies. Um, I think it adds a great dynamic to the series, doesn't it? Mm. Um, you know, Henry, their mothers are such a big part of their lives and they both realise that they've kind of been brought up in not the same way because they've got brought up completely differently, but they have a lot in common in the sense of the way they're forced into this situation that they both don't want to be a part of. Um, and I think their, their mothers kind of want to live through them in a way. Mm. You know, Lizzie and Henry would gladly go off and do their own thing of what they want to do, but their mothers are so set on them, you know, doing the right thing for their house. Um, so yeah, they, yeah, they're very opinionated. They're both puppets of ambition. Yeah. yeah ambitious mm -hmm. parents. And I think in that, in that, in that similarity is where they come together and meet in the middle, fall in love. Mm -hmm. Do you think though that Henry is more ambitious than personally ambitious because you know she's in love with someone else and then all that works out? But do you think he had some? I know his mother Absol controls, but absolutely. Yeah, I mean, if you think about being raised for the kingship from such a young age, not really feeling like you have a strong enough claim to get there, and then getting there against all odds at the Battle of Bosworth, winning. Um, he must have thought it was God's, God's will. I mean, the thing to remember is how religious these people were at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think in his mind, yeah, it's, he's, he's God's anointed king. And with that comes the, the sense that all the ambition has finally led him there. And it's when all these things start to happen and there's so much dynastic instability that he kind of completely flies off the handle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think Lizzie kind of runs with it once but when she is queen she gets to a point where she's like she suddenly becomes aware of the you know the authority and she has especially with Margaret because mm. but even when they first get married Margaret still has the <clears throat> queen's rooms and Margaret still kind of runs the ship mm -hmm. um, and Lizzie like eventually finds her feet with it and it's kind of like actually that's not gonna happen anymore yeah so that's fun to see the shift with with Lizzie and Margaret. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Different kind of question. Mm -hmm. What is something, I feel like the whole book is kind of about parents wanting their kids to do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And then the kids eventually accepting that or finding some kind of like peace in it. Is there anything your parents made you do that you did not want to do, but you ended up being happy you did? Swimming lessons. Oh, my mom and dad used to send me and my brother to swimming lessons. And we used to have to wear swimming caps. <laughs> my brother hated it, absolutely hated it. But now I'm like, I'm glad I did that. At the time it was torture, but <laughs> yeah, I'd say that. Other than that, no, my mum and dad are quite easy going and they've kind of let me, you know, find what it is I like. Um, swimming lessons, not so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, mine too, I guess. They just kind of said, they told me to uh, work hard. Well, you know, and that's follow, a good thing. Follow your dreams. So yeah, it's a good thing. Not that I didn't want to do those things. <laughs> right. Working yeah. hard, I don't know if I wanted to do for a long time. Not everybody wants to do homework. Yeah, that kind of thing. <clears throat> yeah, and I didn't through no. high school. But then, once I got out of high school, it's like, oh, this is what my mother was trying to get me to do for so long. And then, you know, you start to work hard in different things that you like to do. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and certain things that my parents told me, I go, oh, that's what I. That's what they learned, yeah. All that time. Mm -hmm. That was the lesson. Yeah. I also, in the reading the story, I feel like it kind of says arranged marriages can be good. Do you think that finding love that way through shared experience and goal is... What was that like to play those characters doing that? I don't think it's because of the arranged marriage, though, at all. I think it's in spite of that they fall in love, you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that's what's so fascinating about it. I think... Yeah. I mean, it's in the arranged marriage part, I think, that they start off so... Right. So it's such a rocky beginning. Yeah. To love, and it's not until they start to kind of get past that point that they start to fall in love with each other. Yeah. Also, they're never going to get away from this marriage. You know, it's... They've got mm -hmm. to do it. They've got to... They've got to stick at it. And, and you can either give it a go or make it hard for everyone. And, and I think the fact that they both... Mm -hmm kind of open up to each other and and um, 
let each other in. I think, yeah, that's when they... Yeah. I mean, arrange my, yeah. It's such a... Now, it's, it, to the, and then ta- them times it was just accepted and it was the norm. Mm. Whereas now it's, you know, it still happens, but it's, it's just a little bit different. I mean, now if they forced you to marry your cousin, it might be a little weird. It would be very, <laughs> very weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also was wondering about the woman's power in mm-hmm. this whole story because a lot of the history is about men being the head and really having all the control mm. and kind of owning the women mm. not owning but you know what I'm, i mean yeah. they do they have all the choices but it feels like the woman is kind of controlling the situation yeah but i think behind but, like most of these great figures these great men were these amazing women who kind of held them up you know mm-hmm. history was just written by the men yeah you know? right That's you know it. you never see you never see this side of it it's just a different perspective um and i think the thing with lizzie is she brings a great sensitivity to henry mm-hmm. um and uh, you know she softens him and shows him love i think which Absolutely. i don't think he's yeah. he's really experienced mm-hmm. um and i think she contributes a lot to the way to the king that he was because like you were saying when she passed he yeah. kind of he was I mean, yeah. historically when elizabeth of york died henry the seventh had like seven thousand churches sing out dirges you know and hold himself away for two weeks in his chambers and didn't speak to anyone i mean he loved her so much and I think this series shows that yeah. absolutely he wouldn't be the king he was if not for her. Mm-hmm. I mean, he would spiral into a complete tyrannical, paranoid state of reign, you know, without, without Lizzie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the power became love. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the whole, and the upbringing to power. And maybe that's something that unites them too, absolutely. that they want to be in control of everything. Yeah. I mean, I think Lizzie definitely, at the beginning, she wants to marry for love and yeah. that's all she wants because, right. you know, that's what her mum had and that's what she's been brought up on is love. Um, so to then to have to ple- completely go against that is quite a... Mm-hmm. Um, but then, like you say, she realises the power that she has in the position that she's in, so... Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. all of our world leaders could just find love. Yes. <laughs> love is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks y'all so much. Thank you. That was great.